Entry into the scene is marked by a flat cut, denoting the short passage of time between its former. This means the scene is taking place in the same day. This is the type of transition primarily used throughout the rest of the scene. The scene starts off with a long shot of the lonely mountain, which pans downward at a tilt to include a passing image of the ruins of Dale, destroyed by the dragon Smaug, and then the magnificent city of Erebor. This not only establishes the setting, but establishes the mood of the scene. In the King's Hall, a long shot features the clawed throne of Erebor to portray the sense of ruin of the situation of the characters whose loyalty are being questioned. Another long shot is used to contrast the darkness of the hall cut in by sharp rays of light. This again portrays the jaggedness of the situation and exemplifies the tension created not only between the characters but by the setting. Another long shot is utilized as Thorin accuses the other dwarves of not searching hard enough for the Arkenstone, tilting downward from behind him at a high angle. He stands atop some stairs, which makes him appear as the largest figure, even above Bilbo, who stands just a little farther behind him. In the next portion of the scene, there is a moment in which Thorin walks in on Bilbo inspecting something in his hands. Along with the audience, Thorin believes this to be the Arkenstone, and the non-diegetic sound of music kicks that? in to set the tension of the scene. In your hand. It's, it's nothing. Show me. Camera movement zooming in on Bilbo's alarmed face serves to dramatize the fear associated with the scene. It makes the audience wonder if Bilbo really has been found out, and if so, how will Thorn react? Once the tension has dissipated, Bilbo reveals the object is an acorn in an extreme close-up to show not only Thorin, but the audience what he is actually holding. The music transforms into the familiar romantic theme music from the first two movies, as Thorin's expression changes from suspicion to tenderness. In back end. The poor prize to take back to the Shire. Cross cuts are utilized during this section, gradually run. zooming in on Thorin's and Bilbo's grinning faces. Yeah, every time I look at it, this zooming in at eye level on each of their faces the balances the relationship, the which not only diminishes the tension, but yeah, conveys okay, the okay, trust okay, between okay. Thorin and Bilbo, and the emotional tenderness of the scene. <laughs> Along with Bilbo, this is the first time since the film started that Thorin's previous softer side has appeared. Survivors. This right mood down. is interrupted by the appearance Extreme of another dwarf, and the camera angle, now at a close-up of There's Thorin's face, of shifts downward ever so slightly at a low angle. To the gate. This casts Thorin's face in shadow, denoting the return of his dark personality and his dominance over the other characters. In between, there are long shots that once again portray the sense of ruin, this time following the people of Lake Town as they venture into the desolated city of Dale, this shows not only their poverty, but the hardship they have come from, having survived the fires of the dragon Smaug. The colors in these shots are generally dull in nature, preserving the overall sickly mood and providing sympathy for the people that Thorin refuses to grant aid. When the elves appear in golden armor, this sets them apart from the poor people of Lake Town, and their vast strength is also portrayed by the bird's eye camera angle of the entire army. In the final portion of this scene, Thorn and the other dwarves armor up for battle at a great distance between Bilbo, who is viewed from behind in order for the viewers to associate with him. The hallway is narrow and darkened, portraying Thorn's narrow-minded thought process. The yellow backlighting behind Thorin denotes the danger and caution that surrounds him and the other dwarves. With only the diegetic sounds of the characters' voices as well as the clanking of their armor, this exemplifies the plot's movement into war. Yet again, Thorin is shown at a low angle and Bilbo at a high angle, to establish the slight fear Bilbo now feels toward him. You're going to need this. Put it on. This vest is made of silver steel. A unique close-up is used as Thorin stares through the mithril, and then switches point of view to Thorin to show Bilbo staring through the mithril. It is most likely meant to portray the divide Thorin's greed has created between him and Bilbo, and perhaps to allude to the fact that the war will literally tear them apart for good at the end of the film. Mithril. It was called by my forebears. 
The no camera blade. follows Thorin in a short dolly movement as he circles around Bilbo after he is put on the mithril, and then shows a mid-shot of Thorin and Bilbo in the foreground and the other dwarves in the background, who seem far away and isolated from the tender scene. This exemplifies the extent of Thorin's trust in Bilbo versus the rest of the company of dwarves. The diegetic sounds of music add to the feeling of camaraderie between Thorin and Bilbo. The iridescently sweet yet tenuous theme of the second film emphasizes Bilbo's tentative acceptance and uneasiness toward Thorin's gift. I look absurd. I'm not a warrior, I'm a hobbit. It is a gift. A token of our friendship. In addition, in this shot, Thorin's face is in complete light, but when he moves forward to take hold of Bilbo's shoulder and pull him aside, both his and Bilbo's faces become shadowed. The camera tracks Thorin and Bilbo from the front as Thorin leads them farther away from the company and into darkness to discuss the apparent betrayal. During their exchange, extreme close-ups are used to draw attention to Thorin's face as his expression contorts in frenzied anxiety, and then cross-cuts back to a close-up of Bilbo's passive expression. The difference of the yellow light of the mind fire in the background of the other dwarves as they armor up for war portrays the overall sense of urgency and warning that is accompanied with the actions of the characters. When Bilbo and Thorin are talking privately, their voices are lower as the music comes in in a low bass chord that thrums quietly and imposingly in the background. One of them has taken it. Bilbo and Thorin's faces are both lit with contrasting white and black shadows, which are used to portray the unconsciously growing fear on Bilbo's face and Thorin's increasingly sinister attitude. As Thorin questions what Bilbo is saying, the camera again zooms in on his vaguely conflicted face, showing that he is unsure whether he trusts his friend more than the growing evil in his head. When Thorin's voice reflects that of the gold-mongering dragon Smaug, who previously occupied Erebor, close-ups of Bilbo's face are used to exemplify the terror him and the audience feel at Thorin's changed personality. The slight camera movement tracking Thorin as he staggers away from Bilbo denotes the distance Thorin's state of mind has created between them. His twisted expression as he repeats exactly what Smaug had told him before his death is featured in another extreme close-up. At the end of the scene, the sound and movements of the characters are slowed down to further emphasize how the war over Erebor's gold has taken over the plot and altered the relationships between the characters. All of this further portrays the horror associated with Thorne's character breakdown.